my mathematicians, we are on Unit 2, Lesson 10 now. We are progressing right along. We have talked about proportional relationships. We've looked at tables and we've made equations. And notice that the equation has to be in the form of y equals kx. And in the table, we have to end up having a proportional relationship when there is a constant between the two quantities when we divide them, the y over x. So today we're going to be introducing graphs of proportional relationships. So this is another way that you can see a proportional relationship and determine, or you can see a relationship between two quantities and determine if it is proportional simply by looking at the graph. So real quick, we're going to just kind of review how to plot some points. So let's talk about, they are always in the form of x comma y, and the coordinate plane is this way with x here and the y axis here, and we always do the x number first, so we either go left or right first, and then we go up or down for the y, okay? So what they've asked us to do is plot all these points. So we're going to come over here to a coordinate plane. Put this out of the way. So this is a nice big coordinate plane for us to work on. And the first point we were asked to graph was 0, 10. So 0, 10 means x is 0. 0, 10. Oh, you can't see that. That means this is x and this is y. So we're going to go we're going to start at 0, 0. And does anybody remember what 0, 0 is called? That is the point of origin. So we're going to start at the point of origin. We're going to go to the right 0. So we're going to stay at 0. And we're going to go positive 10. So we're going to go up 10. And we're going to put a point here. And then we're going to label that point 0, comma 10. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to try the next ones and see if you end up in the same place as I am. So stop the video and you plot all those points. All right, so let's check your work. The next one is 1, 8. So I'm going to start at the point of origin. Go 1 to the right. Go up 8. Put a dot there. Label it 1, 8. Remember, this is my x. This is my y. The next one is 2 comma 6, so start at my origin, go to 2, and I'm going to go up 6, 2 comma 6. The next one they asked us to do is 3 comma 4, start at my origin, I always go left or right first, it's a positive 3, and then I'm going to go up 4, so that's 3 comma 4. And then we had 4, 2, so 4, 2 up 2 is right here. All right, so they ask us, what do you notice about the graph? Well, what do you notice? I notice that these points line up, and I could draw, if I had a ruler, which I didn't bring a ruler with me. If I had a ruler, can I connect these dots? Oh, I could. Okay, that means those points make a line, so that is linear. So it is linear. What else do you notice? Well, as x increases, as the value of x gets bigger, what does y do? y gets smaller. So as x increases, y decreases. Well, how much does it do it by? Well, let's write down what we said first. So the points line up. So as x increases by 1, what does y do? y decreases by 2. Okay? And if we look at it from left to right and think about being a skier, we are skiing downhill. So it has a downhill slope. 
All right, that's going to be important. All right, now we're going to move on to some t-shirts for sale. Some t-shirts cost $8 each. We are being asked to... Um, oh, they gave us the table. Well, that was nice of them. What does X represent? Let's look at X. Hmm. What does this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 represent? That represents the number of t-shirts. What does Y represent? Well, remember, one t-shirt cost $8, so that means two t-shirts would be $16. So that is going to be the cost of the t-shirts. Okay. Is there a proportional relationship between X and Y? How do we find that? Oh, we do our Y over X table, or column. So we get 8 over 1 here, that's 8. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 32 divided by 4 is 8. 40 divided by 5 is 8. 48 divided by 6 is 8. So, yes, because we have a COP, but also what was the equation? Well, if each shirt cost $8, that means the total cost Y is going to be eight times the number of shirts. Oh, is that in the form of Y equals KX? It sure is. All right, so now we're going to look at what does the graph look like. So going across, first we need to label our um, axes on our graph. So down here is our X, and what did we say X was going to be? X is the number of shirts. Number of t-shirts. And what was our Y? Y was the cost. And that was in dollars. Okay, and this graph is all about, what is it about? Mm, cost of shirts. Okay, so we got to give our graph a title and we have to label the two axes. Now let's go ahead and graph these pairs, and this is X and this is Y. So we are going to be graphing 1,8. 2 comma 16 and so forth. So y'all see where I got those numbers? So one is going to cost me eight dollars and it looks like each one of these is worth two, four, six, eight. Yep, each one of these is worth two going up. So one shirt cost eight dollars. So one, two, four, six, eight. So here is one comma eight. Two shirts cost sixteen dollars. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. There's two shirts. Cost $16. So that point would be 2, 16. 3 would be 3, 24. 3, here's 24. 22, 24. It's 3, 24. Then we are doing 4, 32, so we'll find 30, and then that's 32, 4, 32, and then we're doing 5, 40 is right here, and the last one is 6, 48, so if this is 50, this is 48. Whoops. Let's look at this. This is 50. This is 48. There we go. Lost my line going across. Okay. Now, what do you notice about the graph? Do you notice that it's linear? I can draw a straight line. Do you notice that as X increases, Y increases as well? When x increases by 1, y increases by 8. Okay. If I were to draw this line, K, 
connect the dots, that's what makes it linear. Where does it start out at? It starts out at the point of origin, zero comma zero. Okay, it's going uphill this time. Okay, if you're thinking looking left to right, as a skier, you would be going uphill. All right, so as x increases by one, y increases by eight. All right, so what you were going, that's it for today's lesson. This next activity, matching tables and graphs, we're going to do that tomorrow on the asynchronous day. I made an activity for you to do that. So don't worry about that. We are going to jump to, well, we can jump to this, are you ready for more? All the graphs in this activity show points where both coordinates are positive. Would it make sense for any of them to have been have one or more coordinates that are negative. Well, let's go back and look at what we started with. This was the cost of shirts. Can we buy a negative shirt? No. So that's why everything in this one was positive. Um, if we go back to the first one, we weren't told, we were just told to plot some graphs. But what could the relationship be here? Hmm. If I run for, I don't know, maybe you could think of one because the Y is decreasing. So that one's a little bit different. All right. And then all the graphs that you do in the activity, they are all going to be positive numbers as well. So I want you to think about that as you look at the um, tables and the story that goes with the table. All right. So one way to represent a proportional relationship is with a graph. Here is a graph that represents different amounts that fit the situation. Blueberries cost $6 per pound. So this right here is your x-axis is the weight in pounds. The y-axis is the cost in dollars. So 1 comma 6 means 1 pound of blueberries costs $6 because the 1 is the x and that's the weight in pounds. And the six is the Y, and that's the cost in dollars. All right, so for example, we could come over here and we could do two pounds of blueberries would be $12. Now, sometimes it makes sense to connect these lines like this one is connected. Because can we buy half a pound? Can we buy three quarters of a pound? Yes, so we would connect those lines. But let's go back to that t-shirt problem. In the t-shirt problem, I connected the line so that you could see it was linear. But can we buy one and a half t-shirts? No. So in this example, the only thing you can really graph are the actual points that we started out with. And if I put a zero there, that means we buy zero t-shirts and it costs us zero dollars, which makes sense, but that's the next lesson. All right. So in this one, we wouldn't necessarily connect the lines because we can't buy half a t-shirt. But in this example here, we can buy half a pound or a quarter of a pound or three-fourths of a pound. All right? So the most important takeaway from this right here, graphs that represent proportional relationships all have these two things in common. Points that satisfy the relationship lie in a straight line. They are linear. That's what linear means, in a straight line. The points lie in a straight line, and we don't necessarily have to connect the line or connect the dots. The line that they lay on passes through the point of origin, or zero comma zero. All right? So if you notice, this one goes through there. This one started here, went through there. Let's go back to that very first one. Is this proportional? It's linear, but it doesn't pass through the point of origin zero, zero. So this relationship is not proportional. All right, so that is the key point right there for graphs. They are linear and they pass through the point of origin. All right, so if we look at this graph, if I was to connect the dots, is it linear? No. Does it pass through the point of origin? Yes, but this is not linear, so this is not proportional. 
This one is linear. It's in a straight line, but it doesn't go through zero comma zero. So this is not proportional. And our term today is origin, and that is the point zero comma zero on a coordinate plane. All right, so I will see you on Zoom to do some practice problems.